Good afternoon, everyone. I am Faustine Zoveda. I work with FAO and I have the pleasure to welcome you to this GLF event on capacity needs for ecosystem restoration in the context of the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration that will start in 2021. Next slide, please. Today, four speakers will lead us through the process of capacity needs assessment underway thanks to the efforts of a dedicated task force in preparation of the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. First, Christophe Bozassier from FAO will present the context in which this effort is taking place and remind us the importance of capacity needs assessment to enable good practice dissemination. Then Kathleen Buckingham from AWRI will help us understand why mapping stakeholders is essential to understand whose capacities need to be strengthened and by which means. After that, Robin Caston from For Restoration International and the University of the Sunshine Coast will present which capacities will be assessed and how. And after a short question and answer session, Vera Burger from FAO will tell you more about how to get engaged with us. Next slide, please. During and after the events, you will be able to interact with us through various means. Please make sure to use the chat box to type your questions at any time during the event. Be ready to use Slido during the interactive sessions by connecting at the link displayed on your screen and using the room name UN Decade. And please take a few minutes at the end of the event to compile the Google form that will be circulated as your answers are critical to improve this process. Next slide, please. So without further delaying, I will give the floor to Christophe, uh, Christophe Bozassier from FAO. Please, Christophe, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Faustine. Uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, everyone. I am Christophe Bezassier, working as forestry officer in the forest and landscape restoration mechanism within uh, the forestry division of FRO. Next slide, please. I am, it's a pleasure for me to present to you uh, the context of this event and to introduce uh, the context of this event uh, uh, to, to discuss the capacity need assessment process we are implementing in the context of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. First, I would like to remind you the goals of these decades, uh, that is to prevent, halt and reverse the degradation of ecosystems worldwide, to increase the understanding of the multiple benefits of ecosystem restoration, uh, and to apply knowledge of ecosystem restoration in education systems and within all public or private sector decision making. And one of the main issues will be the capacity development of uh, all stakeholders. Next slide, please. Uh, in this context, uh, uh, a task force has been established uh, to support the process uh, on best practices uh, and uh, it's a collaborative effort on knowledge capitalization and dissemination, including uh, identification of new products. We have several outputs uh, in this uh, task force led by FAO, but with uh, 85 members from 32 different organizations. Uh, and two uh, outputs are clearly focused on capacity development, capacity need assessment and development of knowledge and learning plan. Next, please. So for the capacity need assessments to be discussed today and presented more in detail with the support of Kathleen and Robin, uh, the aim is to identify what and whose system-wide capacities need to be enhanced to achieve the goals of the decade. Uh, next, please. The methodology, uh, first we have uh, a stakeholder mapping and a network analysis. And uh, another group of the task force worked on the questionnaire and compensating multiple um, dimension of capacity with the idea at the end, as a result, to have a, a capacity enhancement strategy based on identified strengths and needs uh, acknowledged by all relevant stakeholders and ensuring that evidence-based practices are systematically captured, disseminated and adapted to the identified needs with this group of uh, stakeholders. Next, please. So the objectives of the session 
Um, first, uh, we want to raise awareness about this capacity need assessment uh, process uh, with the idea to uh, attract some uh, key players and stakeholders to, to participate, engage grassroots organizations, and gain critical feedback on the proposed methodology and stakeholder information. Next, please. Over to you. Uh, Thank you, Kathleen. Christophe. Uh, so Kathleen will now lead us through this uh, stakeholder mapping exercise. Thank you very much, Faustine. Um, so next slide. Thank you. So traditionally, forest and landscape restoration has been concerned with mapping the biophysical opportunity to plant trees and shrubs and to regenerate landscapes. But we know it's not just about trees, it's about people, and we need to understand the social landscape. The World Resources Institute has created a social landscapes guide, which is based on the science of social network analysis. And this is informing um, the capacity needs assessment. So we all know that the UN decade is a response to a network of actors that have been working for decades on restoration. And we need to map those actors. We need to map those stakeholders. And we need to assess who has access to what resources. So in order to measure um, whether stakeholders have equitable access to resources, we need to map those flows. So with this capacity needs assessments, we're going to measure a number of resource flows. So information and training is important. We need to understand collaboration and partnerships. Funding flows, and we need to understand resource flows at the ground level, so seeds and seedlings. Now, in order to understand this, this will only ever be a partial um, picture of the networks that are out there. So we really need to drum up support for this capacity assessment in order to get a, a broad picture of the networks that are out there. Now, this information can be used to understand the social landscape. So for example, we can start to understand who are the central actors in the network? Who are the gatekeepers? Who is on the periphery of the network? And how can this information on social capital be used to enhance capacity and to remove bottlenecks? So for example, on the right here, you can see a, a stakeholder map that we conducted in Rwanda. And it shows the legend there, shows the different stakeholder groups. What we're looking at um, for this capacity assessment is at the organizational level. So we're not looking at the individual level, we're looking at organizations. So for example, we will understand NGOs and research institutions, government and private sector. So we can start to understand who is best placed to help with capacity building. Because as I said, you know, the network already exists and there are flows to the community, there are flows to the implementers already in place. So how can we maximize on this? Um, so going to the first question, this is just um, an example of some of the questions that we hope to um, have within the capacity needs assessment. Um, so next slide, please. So, um, Faustine said at the beginning that um, you can go into slido.com. So hopefully you've had the opportunity to go into slido.com and use the code hashtag GLF biodiversity. So input that into slido.com and go into the room UN decade. Um, so once you've done that, you should be able to see um, some questions um, there. So thinking about the first question um, being um, what information, um, um, where do you get ecosystem restoration information from? Um, so again, you're in slido.com, um, hashtag GLF 
biodiversity. Where do you get ecosystem restoration information from? So where are your sources? Where are your go-to sources? What training have you received this year or last year or in the past? What organizations, departments, journals do you rely on for information? So just giving you a little time to input your answers. Remember, if you input one answer and press return, you can keep inputting answers. So maybe it's time to, to have a reveal of the answers that are coming up now. Okay, that's really interesting. Thank you for inputting your answers. We wanted to hide there so we didn't influence you. Um, so we can see here that UNEP is, is, a, is one of the key resources um, that people are using. Thank you, WRI are up there as well. Um, but what we want to show with this is, you know, we really want to understand the network so that we can collaborate better, that we can share information better that we can um, really think about leaning and, and collaborating on those sources. Okay. Um, okay, I think we've got the picture there. Um, people can keep going, you can keep inputting. Next question. Who are your ecosystem restoration project partners? So maybe you have an MOU with someone, a, a certain organization, maybe you share funding with certain organizations? Who are the partners that you've been working on on restoration projects? Um, I think you've got the hang of this now. Um, hashtag GLF biodiversity. Um, shall we have a reveal? Maybe. Okay, that's interesting. So now with this exercise, one of the key things with social network analysis is seeing the flows um, that occur. And in this exercise is anonymous. So we don't have the information about connections. When we're doing um, the final survey, we will make sure that we can start to understand the flows that exist. But this gives us an understanding of who's working with who in a, in a trial basis. Okay, that's really interesting. Okay, moving on. Who funds your ecosystem restoration work? So who, who are the key funders um, that are engaging with restoration? Um, have you received funding lately? Which organizations do you get funding from? Again, this is anonymous, so, so don't worry. Um, maybe we can have a reveal L listing up to three funders. We can start to understand the funding landscape. That's great. So we, we're getting lots of different funders coming up there. Governments, I can see um, various different, some interesting funders that are also coming up um, there. And government and Jeff being key players within this. That's, that's really interesting. And, you know, these, these, uh, this input really goes towards understanding the social landscape for the decade. So please um, sign up to be engaged and we can really start to see who are the key actors and how we can um, help build capacity and which actors can help build capacity. Okay, so um, over to the next um, participant um, to, to give their presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathleen. And uh, now it's over for um, Robin Chasdon, who will tell us a bit more about uh, the capacity needs assessment. So Robin Chasdon from Forest Restoration International and the University of the Sunshine Coast uh, will give us some more insights on uh, the ongoing process of capacity needs assessment in preparation uh, by the task force. Over to you, Robin, thanks. Thank you, Faustine. Um, and I uh, hope uh, that you can all see, see me here. Um, so when we began planning, uh, next slide, please. When we began planning the capacity needs assessment, the first question that, that we wanted to ask was whose capacity 
are we concerned with and the capacity to do what? And we wanted to take a very broad view of all of the people involved in restoration, not, not only just key stakeholders, but basically who, who in the world is involved. Um, and what we mean by capacity building is the enhancing the ability for individuals, families, communities, teams, organizations, agencies, all of these different groups to take action specifically in this context to transform degraded uh, systems into restored and resilient productive systems. And to do this, we need to strengthen all forms of capital, including natural capital, human capital, social capital, cultural capital, financial capital, built capital, political capital. Looking across the board, that helps to understand what kind of capacities we need to focus on and assess. And not only, and at all scales, at local, national, and global scales, with the goal of building a more sustainable world. So we realized that while assessing these capacities, we would be able to understand the baseline. What is the capacity now uh, that we have our current level of capacity now as the UN decade is beginning? And potentially to understand how this can, can be changed um, as time goes by through the decade. So now we're going to uh, have uh, some questions that are somewhat representative of the questions that we will be um, asking in the questionnaire. And again, we really would love to get your feedback on these questions. Um, there will be an opportunity for you to fill out a small form at the end. Uh, and right now I want you to be in the Slido room and we're gonna have a set of questions uh, that we're going to go to right now with the first question. First question, please. Next slide. Okay, so this question is really getting at what kind of work and activities are being done um, because this is fundamental to assessing and enhancing capacity to do all of these different things. So in this question, I want you to select the response that best describes the work you do within the arena of restoration. And you can select more than one of these. So go ahead and you can, um, after you have one response, you can also put in a, as many responses as you want, as fit your, the focus of your own work. So I'll give you a little time to do this. Okay, why don't we reveal the answers? Okay, so in this audience, we have um, a heavy emphasis on socioeconomic aspects of restoration and capacity development and implementation on the ground. So I think we have a, a wonderful audience here to, um, to provide input into uh, the details and also to help with the pilot of, of our questionnaire. That's excellent. We're seeing more and more responses here uh, favoring socioeconomic work and, and capacity development and implementation. So this is wonderful feedback and um, prepare people for the next question. So let's move on. Next question on Slido. Okay, now we wanna know more about um, where you fit in terms of different stakeholder groups. So this gets, um, will be important for the stakeholder mapping, but also as information to inform the capacity building, the capacity assessment needs that you identify um, when taking the questionnaire. And we wanna make sure that we have done a good job of characterizing these groups. This is a pretty long list. You may need to scroll down in your Slido to make sure you're seeing all of the options. Again, you can select more than one so you can uh, enter more than one answer as you go through. Um, where, where do you fit into this scheme? What kind of stakeholder are you? Um, what kind of sector do you work with? Uh, what kind of organization do you work with? And what kind of um, group do you affiliate with in terms of your, um, the, the work that you do in restoration? Okay, I think we can start revealing the answers.
And I hope people were aware you could scroll down to see additional choices. Okay, we seem to have um, a majority of people are working with um, NGOs on the international scale. Um, but also we have a lot of researchers with us today, uh, consultants and educators. Um, and, and we also have some good representation from community groups, indigenous groups. Great, thanks for showing all of that. Wonderful. Okay, so this, this will be important information for the questionnaire because it will uh, redirect people to certain parts of the questionnaire to get more information that pertains specifically to different stakeholder groups. Excellent. All right, now we're gonna move on to the next question. And here, here, this is a very quick answer, but I want you to just mention one country that is the main focus of the work you do in restoration. It doesn't necessarily have to be the country where you live, but where you spend, or, or even where you do your work on the ground, but where, what is the main focus and what country do you know best in terms of the, the capacity available in that country? So just list one country, should be a pretty quick response. And let's show the results. Can we reveal the results? Let's see the results of this question. Wow, good. We have good representation. Um, lots of countries around the world, big focus on Indonesia. And some people have global as their answer. That's okay. Great, 30 African countries, wonderful. All right, this will be also important, uh, keeping in mind the next question. So be thinking about that particular country and let's move on to the next question. I think this is perhaps the most challenging one to, to address today, um, but we will be, uh, in, providing a lot more of these options in the questionnaire and you'll be able to kind of rank the level of capacity uh, for each of these. But this, in this exercise, we're just gonna ask you to select um, three of the most urgent needs for developing capacity as applied to the country that you just mentioned. Um, which of these aspects do you think are most important? It doesn't mean that they're not all important, but if you had to prioritize or start out doing only three of these, which ones would you pick? Identifying priority areas, assessing baseline conditions, developing monitoring systems, implementing practices, calculating costs and benefits and trade-offs and general, generating sustainable sources of finance. So be thinking about which three of those would you prioritize, do you think are, are most urgent in the countries that you that you mentioned. Let's show the results. Okay. Uh, the results are still coming in. I realize this is a hard question, so you can take a little more time. This is a really important question. We have a lot of people who, who prioritize the developing of monitoring systems for tracking progress. And then it uh, looks like the next important priority is, is financing sources. But we have, we have an important emphasis on, on uh, calculating the costs and benefits and the trade-offs of restoration as well and implementing evidence-based practices. Great. So um, thank you. I, I think um, we'll move uh, we'll move on. I think that was the end of our questions. But these are the kinds of statements. All of these different options for developing capacity are are what makes up a lot of the assessment um, questionnaire. There will be uh, many many other aspects that are raised and then the user will simply indicate is there no capacity some capacity or do we have full capacity to do this 
um, to the best of their knowledge uh, as applied to uh, to the particular stakeholder group or sector that they're that they're engaged in. And with this information, we really hope to to get um, a very broad assessment of how all of these different aspects uh, need to be strengthened. And then with the combined with the stakeholder mapping, we'll be able to get an understanding of how we can best implement any capacity building um, activities um, and how we can best um, have information and capacity flow to all of the stakeholders that need it. So I think we're now going to move to a question and answer session with uh, me and Kathleen. So we can move on to the next slide. So thank you very much, Robin, for uh, your presentation. And uh, thanks a lot, Kathleen. So now um, we have understood that this effort builds on a methodology that, uh, complement and that uh, builds on two uh, complementary approaches, a stakeholder mapping and network analysis on one side, uh, and a questionnaire encompassing multiple dimensions of capacity on the other one, and that the combination of both uh, will help define a, a comprehensive capacity enhancement strategy. So now um, I believe that we have received a few questions from the audience and we have uh, about 10 minutes to, to reply to those questions. Um, maybe a first question that we have received from the audience, and I think Kathleen, uh, that this has already been partly addressed. Uh, we're being asked uh, if there is any link to the WRI publication of the social network analysis. So maybe you could uh, maybe say a, a couple of words on that publication. Kathleen to complement the, the link. Thanks. Okay, yes, thank you. So I've provided the link and that looks at various countries. Um, we have information on stakeholder mapping in Indonesia, in Rwanda, in Kenya. Um, so we're looking at different things like um, information flows um, and capacity flows there. So um, Hopefully that we, we created that methodology as a, um, a guide to help look at restoration specific questions in social network analysis. And just to say, you know, it is partial information, you know, it's, it's a way of trying to understand the social landscape, but the more information um, that we can get there, the better. Um, so just a caveat that it, it always will only be partial um, information on the social landscape. Thank you very much, Kathleen. So um, we have a second question um, that I think we will direct to Christophe. Uh, Christophe, uh, we have a question from someone in the audience who is asking, what are the challenges in pushing for ecosystem restoration in countries with strict governments? With Strict governments, strict governments, and I'm not sure what strict I'm not sure I means. <laughs> well, what the, 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 the strict uh, world, but I assume that it is uh, in country where uh, the public sector or the government is the owner of the land. Is it the question? Uh, if it, this is the case, I, I would like just to insist on the fact that restoration and uh, and the ownership of the, of the land tenure is very important. And the governance aspect are very important because successful restoration uh, uh, efforts, initiative, investments uh, are generally based on a very good local governance with a decision taken uh, at local level by a group of stakeholders. And uh, of course, uh, in an area where this governance is weak, it's generally uh, not so easy to uh, to have this uh, approach and uh, to have this uh, possibility to have a, a consensus on the use of the landscape. Uh, it does not mean that the plantation and reforestation program are not working in these in this areas with more uh, governmental decision-making process, 
uh, but generally it's it, it, it's it's a uh, more uh, afforestation and restoration uh, programs and clearly restoration that are based on the principles we are promoting in the context of this uh, uh, ecosystem restoration uh, decade with the idea to really create a momentum and a movement with uh, local actors that are doing the, and restoring the landscape based on, on their needs, their social, economic and environmental needs. I hope I answered to the question. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Christophe. Uh, I think maybe one question for uh, Patrick. Um, Patrick, if you're still connected with us, uh, we would like to hear more about what are system-wide capacities. Could you please tell us more about that? Sure, hello colleagues. This is Patrick. Can you hear me? Excellent. We, we can hear you. All right, excellent. So system-wide, uh, colleagues, we mean uh, we go beyond uh, enabling and empowering people to know things or do things better, but we want to strengthen organizations, institutions, and the enabling policy environment in a systemic, holistic way. Why? So we actually achieve more sustainable or durable results. So it's linked to the question of who owns this process and who leads this process. And it needs to be country owned and country driven. So when we say systemic or system wide capacity enhancement or development, we look at all the elements, enabling and empowering all the elements in the system uh, that can, in this case, help to take sustainable action on the goals for the decade themselves. And the way we do it is we assess them in a participatory inclusive way and we define a strategy to, to then measure progress and implement. So it's very important to look at it in a business as unusual way, not just training, but beyond empowering the system. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Patrick, for this clarification. Uh, we also have a comment, um, a good comment for Robin, someone enthusiastic who says, great survey, Robin. It is interesting to see that although farmers, indigenous communities and other land owners are closest to the problem, the results showed most are working with international NGOs. Seems to imply that we have some disconnect between our goals and actions. Any comment on that, Robin? Oh, you we do have it. a specific. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks for that question. I do think that we have a, a rarefied audience here at the Global Landscape Forum. Uh, we want to make sure that we reach out with this survey to um, all kinds of grassroots organizations um, and to groups that can connect us and that can help uh, promote the survey among uh, communities and uh, farmer organizations, uh, even church organizations. We really want to reach uh, people on the ground very much. We want to learn from them what kind of uh, things there, what obstacles are in their way, what kind of needs do they have, um, because we can help to uh, address many of those in our capacity enhancement strategy. So it's critical that um, you provide feedback at the end uh, where you have that form, the Google form, um, let us know how we can reach out and uh, when, when the, uh, we have launched the survey, how we can uh, spread that so that um, everyone is able to participate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. And maybe um, to take another comment um, that I think uh, would be interestingly discussed by uh, Christophe. Um, there is someone who says also most funding comes from friends, families and fools first, and then angel investors and first, first mover self-funding. Big banks are last movers. Christophe, any comments to make with regards to um, financial instruments, financial mechanisms to channel um, towards the restoration initiatives? Yes, we, we had a discussion also in the previous event, uh, the launch of the Una Silva uh, 252 uh, this, uh, 
during lunchtime, and uh, we, uh, we we discuss these uh, issues on finance. What is important in terms of, uh, of how to, to finance restoration initiatives? Uh, I think there, there is a mix of, uh, of uh, funding source, sources. We have climate finance, we have bilateral or multilateral classic cooperation uh, agencies. Of course, it's important to have the, the domestic and national budgets on board. Uh, we have a, a private sector with different objectives, depending if it is, it's, it's in the context of their, their responsible social and environmental uh, corporate uh, responsibility strategy, or if it's for uh, traditional investors or impact funds. And the issue is to bring all those investors on board and to to try to 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 mutualize the available resources to to achieve the global targets of restoration uh, in the context of the UN decade. Um, the issue also is to have the project promoters ready for investment and uh, able to discuss with investors and private investors in particular. So generally we have a problem of capacity for the project promoter to prepare good and attractive bankable project and it will be clearly something we need to, to address during the decade to build those capacity to facilitate uh, the link between uh, the, the the donors, investors, public, private, and uh, and, the, and the project promoters at landscape level that have the ideas that, that want to, to restore their landscape, but sometimes they are not really uh, strong in developing attractive and bankable projects. So something needs to be done on this issue. Thank you, Christophe. So um, I think now we will move to the conclusions uh, and closure of this event. Um, and um, I'm going to give the floor to Vera uh, to tell us more about how to get engaged with us in the future. Thank you very much, Faustine. Good afternoon. Good morning to everybody. Uh, yes, the objectives of the session today was to raise awareness about capacity in assessment, engage the grassroots organizations, and gain critical feedback on, on the methodology and, and stakeholder information. And I think uh, we we had a lot of uh, we gained a lot of these things which we wanted to today. So uh, please, next slide. So what are our next steps right now today? Or at the moment, we are looking into preparing and fine tuning the capacity needs assessment, um, looking at the pilot methodology uh, during this event, refining the questionnaire and disseminating the plan, developing and disseminating the, the capacity uh, needs assessment plan. Uh, late in October, in, in November, we will then uh, disseminate and implement the, the capacity needs assessment. It will be publicized through networks, websites, newsletters, social media, uh, the COPs and, and events. And then later in February to June next year, when the, when the, uh, when the decade is launched, we will have uh, presented major findings at different at the World Forestry Congress, which will be in, in May 2021, and in June at the, at the um, uh, Society for Eco e e Ecosystem Restoration Congress in Quebec City. So this is more or less a timeline which we have. For, for working on this capacity needs assessment. So please next. Uh, so how can you help us in this process? Um, I think you already answered this and helped us a lot by answering a lot of questions today. And it really gave us a very good picture of, of, of very important issues. Uh, but there are much more things you can do. First, uh, first of all, it's, uh, you can suggest networks, sources and channels for, distribute, uh, for distribution of the questionnaire which uh, will need your help. Uh, you can help us in pilot testing the questionnaire and provide the feedback. And you can provide additional feedback on the proposed methodology and participate in the capacity in this assessment through filling out the questionnaire. Actually, there, um, there is a form, uh, a link in the chat, which you can see. And, and through that link, you can uh, provide exactly this information in which area or in which of these four uh, areas you could contribute or what your potential contribution, contributions could be. So 
I, the link is already in the chat and you and I would really appreciate if you could uh, take the time to fill in that questionnaire using the link in the chat on how you would like to engage with this process. So I would like to thank you very, very much for your participation in this event. I think uh, there were very interesting um, answers which we got through this uh, question, through the slide of questions, which really uh, um, can guide us very well. And also through your questions through the, uh, through the Q&A. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for your participation and hope to see you in future in, involved in our work. And congratulations for everybody for this very interesting webinar. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.